We begin the news hour from Libya, where Muammar Gaddafi's grip on power has suffered a blow. One of his most trusted colleagues, Foreign Minister Musa Kusa, has defected and he's fled to London. The British Foreign Office confirmed Kusa arrived off his own free will. Tim Friend has more. A political strongman and a long-time Secret Service chief, Musa Kusa's significance should not be underestimated. He's a skilled negotiator and over the years one of Colonel Gaddafi's most trusted colleagues. He sat on the Libyan Revolutionary Committee, which forms the backbone of Gaddafi's rule. Kusa has been in charge of major foreign policy affairs such as Africa and Libya's relations with the West. He is a skilled and seasoned uh, diplomat. He's Gaddafi's right-hand man in foreign policy and international relations. He is deeply trusted by Gaddafi. He is part of the inner circle of the regime itself. And that's why whatever happens to Kusa will likely represent a hard blow to Gaddafi himself. Musa Kusa was appointed as Libya's ambassador to the UK in 1980. Later, he served as the head of the Libyan intelligence agency. And he was also seen as a key figure in brokering diplomatic relations between Libya and many NATO nations. Musa Kusa was expelled from the UK shortly after being appointed ambassador here in London in 1980, after saying that he intended to eliminate political opponents in Britain. Despite that, he went on to become instrumental in Gaddafi's dramatic decision to abandon weapons of mass destruction programs, which led to the lifting of long-standing international sanctions. And he played a key role in reaching deals to compensate victims of the Lockerbie bombing in 1988. Tim Friend, Al Jazeera. Well, Tim joins us now live from London. And Tim, has the British Foreign Ministry released any more information on Kusa's arrival in the UK? They're not saying anything more for the moment other than he is here and that he is defected. And I suspect what's happening now is that he's probably being debriefed by uh, intelligence officials. They'll be asking him exactly what he knows or what he intends to do. It presents a tricky problem for the British authorities because, as I was saying in my report, uh, at one point he was saying that uh, he intended to eliminate uh, opponents of Gaddafi living here in the UK and he's certainly not welcome despite his uh, defection by uh, the opponents of Gaddafi who have been demonstrating in London in recent weeks. Uh, in fact they would uh, positively uh, not want him here so although he will be immensely useful in terms of what he knows to the British authorities he does present them with something of a dilemma of what they do with him of course they don't want to appear to be uh, too antagonistic towards him because what they want to do is encourage other people uh, in the Libyan current Libyan leadership to come over uh, as well and um, so they will want to appear at least for the time being to be treating him well and Tim as you were saying there in your report uh, I was just listening to it uh, you're saying that uh, Kusa of course uh, played a key role in Libya's relations with the West in the past just tell us a little bit more about the man well, he was in head of the intelligence service for 15 years, so in other words, what he knows is probably immense. Although there have been reports recently that he'd become somewhat estranged from the inner circle of the Gaddafi regime. There were a couple of reports that he'd had arguments with two of Gaddafi's sons. So although uh, he was uh, trusted, um, I think it's fair to say he was not actually part of that inner circle and what's intriguing at the moment is how he made uh, his departure from Libya because uh, there are reports that uh, Gaddafi is asking all those close to him to stay in his compound at the moment. So in other words, he wants to keep them close as possible. He doesn't want any prospect of people uh, moving off uh, and defecting. But this is what's happened in this case. There are reports that um, uh, th this defector crossed the border into Tunisia 
in an armed convoy, I should say a heavy uh, convoy of, of, of four-wheel drives over the border. And then he met with some uh, delegations in a city in Tunisia, uh, the Russians perhaps and the French, um, before he got on board this plane and made his way to the UK, to an airfield, not a commercial airfield, about 60 kilometres south of London. So there's a, a bit of drama and intrigue to the way in which he made his escape. Yeah, okay, Tim, I'm actually going to talk to Anita about that right now because uh, she's joining us live from Tripoli. But, Tim, thank you very much for that. Anita, I wanted to ask you, I mean, how easy or difficult would it have been for Musa Kusa to actually get out of Libya? Because we heard Tim Friend there say that Gaddafi is reportedly keeping those around him very close, even in his compound. Well, I think I can say with confidence that if anyone in Tripoli in the inner circle of Colonel Gaddafi had got wind of Musa Kusa's intended departure, they would almost certainly have stopped him from going and brought him back pronto to that compound to answer for his change of heart, his disloyalty, his traitorousness and all the other words that get banded around at times like these. But it goes, it would seem, it goes far beyond Musa Kusa tonight because we're receiving reasonably reliable information yet to be confirmed by the individuals themselves, of course, but reasonably reliable information from Tunisia that he was not alone, just as you and I discussed a little earlier, that in fact there are a tranche of Libyan diplomats, Libyan ministers, I should say, waiting to quit, waiting to fly to various European capitals. And the names I have are the current head of intelligence, the oil minister, the secretary uh, of the General People's Congress, that's the sort of nominal representative body here, but, but not all that representative, if you understand what I mean, and one of the other deputy foreign ministers working under Musa Kusa, a gentleman by the name of Abdullahi al -Ubaidi. So uh, we have this information that they are going to, which means that, in effect, the government of Colonel Gaddafi is collapsing around him tonight and running for the hills. Uh, of course, that, that matters quite a bit uh, in, in the larger perspective. How much it matters in Libya is another question, because of course it's all about Colonel Gaddafi. The people are loyal to him, not loyal to his ministers. He's the one they cheer for. He's the one they wave their green flags about. So how this will be taken by the, the Libyan people is, is another question. Whether they'll even fully understand what's going on if they're not watching foreign TV channels is also another question, because what they were told today on state TV was that Musa Kusa had gone on holiday. They may be told that about the other ministers too, but one other detail I wanted to share with you tonight. There is a figure... Uh, that we journalists have got to know very, very well over the month or more that we've been here following this story, and that is the government spokesman, Musa Ibrahim. He's been the man who has come to dominate the press conferences as the principal source of information about what has been going on in this country, uh, the principal voice for the government as it tries to argue its case in the international arena. He's also the man who was so very, very critical of uh, Eman al obedi the woman who, who came into the Rixus Hotel seeking the protection of foreign journalists after she said having been raped by members of Colonel Gaddafi's paramilitary who called her a drunk, mentally unstable, implied she was a prostitute. Well, this man uh, barricaded himself into the business center of the hotel this evening as the news broke of these ministerial defections and refused to come out. A group of journalists uh, parked outside uh, looking for some answers, begging for him to come out, but he refused for the better part of an hour, we understand. When he finally did come out, uh, he said, no comment, I'm checking the facts, and promptly moved to another room in the hotel where he closed the door and went to work on his laptop again. So I think we can say that the government itself, such as it is, is in disarray tonight. All right, Anita, thank you very much for that update.